What's going on, miners? I'm Chump Change XD. Today's video, we're going to be taking my RTX A2000 rig and we're going to be testing it in four different ways. So, I have an RTX A2000 just plain Jane out of the box. We have a copper modded A2000, a shunt modded A2000, and a copper and shunt modded A2000. So, if you guys want to see the results inside Hive OS, let's do it. Right, so here we are this is the rig of the rtx a2000s and i have shunt modded six of these units and i have copper modded five of these units so the five with the blue tape have been copper modded these two right here have not been shunt modded but these three over here have so what we're going to do is take one of these cards out that have the shunt mod and the copper mod on it we're going to test that then we're going to be testing a regular no copper mod but a shunt mod on the rtx a2000 we'll test that then we're going to test the rtx a2000 with only the copper mod no shunt mod and then we're going to test one of the original rtx a2000s exactly as it was out of the box and we're going to see just what the power consumption is hash rate the whole nine yards so i'll get the clocks on all these and we'll go from there my plan is to throw it on my old pc which is my test bench now for the time being we're going to be powering it individually from this server PSU going through this power meter right here so we can read the wattage on each individual card and we'll get inside Hive OS and see how each one does so let's do it all right so here we are inside Hive OS as you can see this is the plain Jane RTX a2000 directly out of the box no mods getting 42.5 mega hash in the software you can see 70 watts in the software and 69.8 watts at the wall so right around 70 this is what I typically run my RTX A2000s at. 1,000 on the core, 3,300 on the memory. It seems to be the most stable, right around 42 and a half. I can push this to 43 with like 35 to 3,800 memory, but it just pushes these cards too hard and they actually become unstable, especially in just a normal condition environment like an open air rig or I don't know, inside your house with AC, you know what I mean? When it gets really hot, these things will tank down to like 38 if the memory is too high and they're actually really trying to compensate and get rid of some of that heat. So now what we're going to do is grab an RTX A2000 that has been shunt modded with no copper shim and see what we can do at these same clocks, how much wattage, how much mega hash, and then we will try to push the clocks and see how far we can go there. All right, so here we are back inside Hive OS. We have the RTX A2000 with the shunt mod only running at the same clocks, 1,000 on the core, 3,300 on the memory. We still have 42.55 mega hash at 70 watts in the software. You're looking at the wall, we have 69.3. So overall, it's nice to know that a shunt modded RTX A2000 can still be clocked down to the normal stock clocks, and it will be just as efficient as they normally are. So now let's try to push this thing a little further and see what we can get for wattage and hash rate. All right, here we are again, modded RTX A2000 with the memory clock pushed as high as I could without it crashing. So now I have 5,700 on the memory and 1155 on the core to exceed the 70 watt power limit that it used to have. Now we're pulling 82 watts in the software. As you can see, it's 82 watts at the wall as well, or just over. We're looking at 49.6 mega hash in the software, obviously this is great to be honest i mean it exceeded the wattage that was the entire point of the shunt mod but it can still be throttled down to be just as efficient as before but if you would note right here the memory temperature is 88 degrees as of right now this does not have a copper shim it just has normal thermal pads and it is climbing by the second so as you can see it just changed to 90 right in front of our eyes so this is probably going to start thermal throttling if I had to guess. Now let's swap over to the copper modded only, not shunt modded and copper modded, but just the copper modded only version. And we'll see what we can do with the original clocks and how cool the actual memory is with just that shim in there. All right, so we're back with the copper shimmed RTX A2000. As you can see, we have just about 42 mega hash in the software. Obviously, this is going to come down to Silicon Lottery and all GPUs being slightly different, but roughly around the same area. Now we have the same clocks on this 1000 on the core 3300 on the memory. We have 70 watts in the software. And if we look at the wall, we have 68 to 69 wattage. So that's pretty cool. The thing I want to note here is 
the memory temperature. We just saw it change from 70 to 72. Now, obviously, that's going to, uh, you know, get higher or whatever as the GPU runs a little longer and then it will stable out at some point usually it's around 72 to 74 but the original rtx a2000 out of the box was right around 82 degrees on the memory so i mean i would say that this is a win for a gpu that is still just as efficient as it was you're not really harming anything by putting the copper in it i think it's worth it you guys let me know down in the comments below let's um jump over to the other rtx a2000 that has the shunt mod and the copper mod and we're going to see if we can get the same efficiency out of that card and then we're going to see if we can push the clocks higher than the last card let's do it so here we are again with the rtx a2000 copper and shunt mod now we have 42.61 again that depends on the silicon lottery gpus may vary a little bit we're looking at 72 watts in the software even though i did power limit it to 68 which is kind of weird we're looking at 70.9 at the wall so i mean it's right there it's not really a big deal i think it's pretty much just as efficient we have a thousand on the core 3300 on the memory but what i want to note here again is the memory temperature we're looking at 70 degrees over the 82 that it was getting to so i think uh we're in pretty good shape now let's push this thing balls to the wall and see how high we can get and see where the memory temp actually sits all right so here we are with the copper and shunt mod pushed to the max we have 50 mega hash again that has to do with silicon lottery obviously 85 watts in the software looking at the wall we're just about 85 watts so that's pretty on par we are 11.55 on the core clock and 58.50 on the memory. Again, what I want to note here is looking at the memory temperature is only at 76. With the memory that high, that is very impressive. So, I mean, I think the copper mod alone is worth it. It's really up to you guys. If you want to purchase one, coolmygpu.com. That's where you guys can go get it. The shunt mod, I'm not sure if I would pay somebody to do it. I think it's worth it for me because I can throttle it back and I did it myself. They literally cost like a couple cents a piece. I think it was altogether about 14 bucks and I was able to do all of my GPUs. So I think it's worth it in that aspect if you have the confidence to be able to do it yourself, but I wouldn't pay somebody to do it. That's just my opinion. So I just finished shunt modding every one of these GPUs except for this guy right here. This is GPU number four in the Octominer order and I'm going to have to uh, get another shunt for this GPU because the one that I had on there, I took it off, wasn't a good connection and I'm just not comfortable putting it back on. So I ended up throwing it out. Now we're gonna have to get another one for that. So I'll be doing that at a later date. Now the one thing I do wanna mention to you guys is if you guys are going to shunt mod anything and put them inside an Octominer per se, these cables right here are 18 gauge wires feeding this riserless motherboard. And there is one spare spot right here that is not filled in you need to remove those 18 gauge cables and you need to put 16 gauge cables in here because they can handle more power the lower the gauge the thicker the wire and the more power they can actually handle now you can see i filled in the missing spot on this riserless motherboard to provide more power to the cards that is what was recommended on red panda mining's channel and i believe octo miner actually advised him to do so with modding these cards all right, back at the PC quick. I wanted to show you guys inside Hive OS. All these things are hashing 49 mega hash. I didn't want to push them to 50. I just feel like that's a little too much to be pushing these cards. So I'm running them at 5,500 memory, still 1,155 on the core, but I have 1,000 on GPU 4 because again, I do need one more shunt to be able to finish modding that card. So 4,250 is what that one's going to stay at for now. But I mean, I think this is a win. So what'd you guys think? I mean, I'm pretty impressed with how the card overall really does handle the shunt mod and the copper mod. But when it comes to doing the shunt mod, unless you're super confident in doing it yourself, I really don't think it's worth sending out paying, you know, $90 or whatever it is to have somebody else do it for you. It really does make the card a little less efficient. And I mean, to gain a little bit more mega hash, I don't know if it's really worth risking your card like that. I mean, it's up to you guys, obviously, you know, to each his own. I did my own only because I'm comfortable doing it. So it does open up possibilities to help out other algorithms in the long run. So that's kind of my reasoning behind it. And these are in an octo miner, so I don't really have an issue keeping them cool. 
as of right now anyways so i guess we'll have to see but the copper mod i really do think that those are necessary to buy they're like 19 bucks or something again cool my gpu i'm not affiliated in any way i really do just like the product they did send over the first five for us to test out and make a video for you guys so if you haven't seen that i will leave a link above please go check it out but if you guys want to get those it is going to save your cards in the long run again the memory gets super hot you change thermal pads anyways so a copper shim that will replace the thermal pads and you won't have to replace thermal pads anymore it's kind of a win-win you know what i mean it does keep the memory chips about 10 degrees cooler so that's a big deal i mean overall but if you guys appreciated this content please go down here hit this like button don't forget to subscribe and if you guys haven't seen this video or this video please go check them out and i'll see you guys soon peace